Take the chains away that keep me loving you, loving you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Wednesday evening, another Wednesday evening sacred pipe ceremony. I hope you got the memo that we are switching again back to Wednesday nights where we started. It just feels so much better to me doing it Wednesday nights because I do my other live video on Mondays where I do the medicine card readings. Um, and then to have Sacred Pipe on Tuesday feels really like lopsided, like top heavy, like the beginning of the week is full of stuff. And one of the purposes of doing this ceremony weekly is to give people a sacred space to come and let go of the world and breathe and connect to spirit give you kind of an excuse to do all of that and it just feels better to me when we do that in the middle of the week rather than that than at the beginning of the week it's kind of like we made it halfway take a breath and we'll get the rest of the way kind of thing so so welcome i hope that you did get the memo that we are on Wednesday nights now. I'm really happy about that. Um, and we are sitting here. Oh, I am Patrick, your friendly neighborhood shaman. Um, if you're new here, that's who I am. And where are we, you might ask? We are on this beautiful little sandy beach overlooking the, the Cedar River This is just, it's become such a sacred place for me. It's just the green and there's an eagle that'll come and sit on that tree right there across the river. I've had deer walking along the shore on the other side and then they come and they, they actually will swim across the river and say hi. And there's a beaver that lives just up river just a little bit so when i set sacred space when i call in the spirits this is where you will be with me so welcome um what else was i going to say i'm gonna put my phone down and fortunately the sun has gone down far enough behind the trees that I don't need to wear my hat. It's not focused totally in my eyes. And so, trying to think of what, how to start. I guess the best way to start whenever we're doing ceremony is to call in that sacred space I was talking about. And I like to do that with either the rattle or the drum. I brought my moose skin drum. Largely because my other drums, by the time we're done with ceremony, if I go to beat my drum to release the sacred space, it's not, I might as well have a a cardboard box it sounds like a cardboard box but my wolf my my wolf drum my moose drum tends to hold its voice it doesn't it's not as affected by the humidity or the temperature and stuff so that's why I bring this one to the river with me so what I'm gonna do is gonna call in the spirits Awesome, I'm glad to see you guys, Bell and Jeff. Um, when we drum, the drum, we've been using the drum literally since the beginning of time, right? In fact, our first drum is our heart. And it's synced up to the heartbeat of Mother Earth. And so we are intimately connected to drums. And we have used drums for the same purpose for so long that when you start to drum, you get you like the spirits all kind of perk up their ears and like, where's the party? Where are we going? They 
it's a kind of a signal to the spirits that we are ready to do our magic. We are ready to do our inner work. And so this is how it looks when I do that. so much better after drumming in that sacred space and now because of the magic of the holographic universe you are virtually sitting here in the same space as I am held by the spirits watched over by the spirits so you are safe you can feel safe to take a breath to let down your armor your shielding you have an extra layer holding you, protecting you. And so you're safe to open your heart. As it's with an open heart that we connect with spirit. We can't, we can't receive the gifts spirit has for us if our hearts are tight, if our bodies are tight. There's no room. The only way, just like you can't grasp water, the only way to hold water is with open hands. And it's the same way with an open heart. You can't receive or hold the blessings of the universe of spirit if your heart is not open. And like Kyle C says, um, the greatest protection is an open heart. So, anyway, so, Thank you again for joining me. Um, if you're new here, let me explain a little bit about the pipe. And to those of you who have been watching and listening for the two and a half years or whatever, thank you for your patience as I go through this every single time. Um, so the sacred pipe, um, you probably know it as the peace pipe. I guess I am gonna have to wear my hat. Um, so you probably know it as the peace pipe, um, and it is a sacred pipe. Um, it was given to the Lakota people by white buffalo calf woman, uh, 19 generations ago. Not this pipe in particular, but the original sacred pipe. Um, and so it's in that tradition that we carry on and we, we smoke our own pipes. Each pipe, each pipe is an individual being, entity of itself. It has its own spirit. Um, and so it's not like a regular, well, maybe I don't wanna go into that so much tonight, but it has its own spirit. It is its own being um, that we honor, that we respect. And so when we do our work, we work in conjunction with the spirit of the pipe. And we keep it separate because um, the stem is like the divine masculine, the bowl is the divine feminine. And when we put it together, it is all of creation. Uh, masculine, feminine, hard, soft, dark, light, everything in one. And so when we put the pipe together, um, 
that's kind of the signal that's like when it kind of wakes my, the spirit of my pipe up and it creates a channel straight to creator straight to great spirit so from the time i put the pipe together until i take it apart is one giant prayer and so um, i always tell people to pay attention to their thoughts and their intentions once i put the pipe together because everything you think or your intentions or what you pray for goes unfiltered straight to source um it's that powerful and so but don't you know as soon as you say that people start being like oh my god i just had a bad thought oh no there's another one you know you don't have to be hyper vigilant about your thoughts about what you're thinking etc just pay attention and when you find yourself um having a negative thought or a lower thought just recognize that and reach for a better feeling thought like abraham hicks says um and so um when we put the pipe together this is basically this is basically church this is when we put it together it is the presence of the cosmos um, in our hands and white buffalo calf woman along with the pipe gave the Lakota people seven total um, ceremonies that revolve around the pipe the pipe is central to all of their ceremonies um, and so when we smoke the pipe you know we put tobacco into the bowl we smoke it and it's the idea is that our prayers and our intentions are carried on the smoke of the tobacco and taken to great spirit um, so we honor the tobacco spirits we thank them for being the um, conveyor of our prayers and our intentions um, so so that's a little bit of background about the pipe um, the way the ceremony is going to look, just to give you an idea so you can follow along. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is um, light some sage and um, smudge everything on my altar. My altar is between me and the phone and it's lower than the camera so you can't see it all. It's down here. And so I will smudge everything on my altar, including the pipe. Um, and then I will say a prayer asking permission to smoke in this place at this time. Then I will put the pipe together, assuming that the answer is yes. Um, and then I will do, um, take four pinches of tobacco or put four pinches of tobacco into the bowl and four is a sacred number it's like the four elements the four uh directions the four seasons um it's the round number like the medicine wheel and so we put in four pinches of tobacco and while i'm doing that i say prayers offering them to the four directions and different things and so you'll you'll hear that part that part is out loud um then once i have the pipe packed um, there's a song that my guides have asked me to sing before every ceremony, every pipe ceremony that I facilitate. So I will sing that at that point. Then I will light the pipe and then I will do breath blessings and offer the pipe to the four directions, to Father Sky, to Mother Earth, in a circle to all our relations and then to Creator. Then I am going to take a moment to sit with sil in silent prayer with the stem to my forehead and the bowl to my heart. Then I will come back, I will relight the pipe, and then I will take a great big puff. I will blow it at my camera. And that is the time for you to think your biggest, bestest thoughts, to pray your biggest, bestest prayers, set your biggest, bestest intentions, and 
um, I always find that the best way to pray is in gratitude. Even if it's something you haven't received yet, it's like, thank you for my robust, good health. Thank you for my prosperity. You know, no matter what your life looks like right now, it's kind of putting an anchor into your intentions of what you will find in the future. And you thank Great Spirit, showing the trust and the faith that you know that all you need to do is ask and it is given, right? So, um, then I will, and then I will pray and send more smoke blessings for different intentions I have, different intentions other people have asked me to pray for. Um, and then I might sit and quiet for a little bit and then do some more breath blessings. And then when it, when it all feels complete, when the energy feels complete, um, I will say another prayer, I will sing another song, and I will take the pipe apart. That will be the end of the ceremony. And then we'll see what, if anything, my guides have for me to talk about. I have a tendency to ramble. My guides never tell me what I'm gonna talk about, but there's usually something. So we'll see what that is. It's an adventure. We'll find out together. Be independent together. So one last sip of mm. my blended chai, and here we go. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May the beauty of the fire lift your spirits higher. May the beauty of the earth fill your heart with mirth. May the beauty of the rain wash away your pain. May the beauty of the sky make your mind to fly. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May the beauty of the fire lift your spirits higher. May the beauty of the earth fill your heart with mirth. May the beauty of the rain wash away your pain. May the beauty of the sky make your mind to fly. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May the beauty of the fire lift your spirits higher. May the beauty of the earth fill your heart with mirth. May the beauty of the rain wash away your pain. May the beauty of the sky make your mind to fly. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day.
grandmother, grandfather, eagle, we send a voice. We ask permission to smoke in this place at this time. All our guides and guardians watch over us as we smoke. Creator, Earth Mother, Tawabin, Shanadisi, Magikiwis, and Wabus, there is always room for you in my pipe. Creator, Earth Mother, for the two-legged, the four-legged, the winged, the crawlers and the swimmers, all my relations come smoke with us. Grandmother Moon, Grandmother Ocean, to the energy of birth, growth, maturity, the spirit realm and our ancestors, may all the passages of our lives be in harmony and grace. Creator, Earth Mother, to Eagle, Coyote, Bear, White Buffalo, White Buffalo Calf Woman, Bringer of the Pipe and the Law of Good Relations to the People. Okane Bayama Okane Bayama Okane Bayama Okane Okane Bayama Okane Bayama Okane Bayama Okane Okane Bayama Okane Bayama Okane Bayama Okane
Grandmother, Grandfather, Eagle, we send a voice. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for our paths. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for holding us in unconditional love, carrying us, holding us, guiding us, that we may find who we truly are, a home. Ihi la ihi o, ihi la ihi o, ihi la ihi o, ihi 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 la ihi o, ihi la ihi o, ihi. I know I say this pretty much every week, but wow. As long as I've been doing this, and as often as I do this, it still always blows me away how powerful this ceremony truly is. Um, I hope that you could feel some of it. I hope that this is helpful for you, giving you a chance to connect to your own heart, to your own spirit. Oof -da. Um, I'm kind of in a different mode. I'm um, a couple weeks from this weekend. <clears throat> I'm heading over to uh, Central Washington to do a vision quest. So I'm going with, I think there's 14 or 15 people in our group. So we're going to do like, we do, we come together, we do group ceremony. Oh, you're so welcome, you guys. Belle and Jeff. I so, I, I so... I love you guys. Thank you for your support. Thank you for always being here. I truly appreciate you. And the other people who are also always supporting me, watching these videos, sharing these videos. Anyway, um, so we're gonna, we come together as a community. We do ceremony together. We eat together. And then we go out into the woods. We each have our own site. Um, with that, we're like, so that we spent, then we spend three days in the woods alone, drumming and praying and smoking. I will bring my pipe. Actually, I technically won't be smoking my pipe because it is Eastern Washington and this is fire season. So usually we can't have fire, so I can't even light a match. So what I always do, and I just had a friend gift me a big tube of bubbles, I will, I'll still put the tobacco in my pipe um, and then I'll, I'll take a, a drag of it even though it's not lit and then I will blow those prayers into the bubbles and watch the bubbles dance through the trees. And so the bubbles are carrying my prayers rather than the smoke, I, I, it's just so magical. Anyway, so I'm in this different mode of preparation and one of the things while I was sitting here um, that occurred to me is as I'm getting ready for that, that weekend, um, and this applies to others, I don't want to just sit here and talk about myself, but I wouldn't be saying these things if I didn't think they applied to other people as well but one of the purposes of a vision quest is to go and you you're, you're crying for a vision you're asking for a vision you're praying for a vision 
of what you're supposed to do, what who you're supposed to become, connect the spirit without the distractions. There's no phones. There's nothing to take your attention other than just sitting quietly um, in the woods talking to nature. And you might not think it, but I have, <clears throat> I'm also a cartoonist and I'm, I'm actually putting together <clears throat> a comic, kind of a graphic novel of last year's vision quest that I haven't finished yet. There's so much stuff that happened you would think, oh, he's just going to sit in the woods in quiet. But I had so much happen with my communication with the spirits, with the guardians of the land. I met the ancestors of the land that came to me and spoke to me. The trees um, I had, there was this oak tree in the middle of my site last year. And I, it gave me the most beautiful story um, and so it's not just, I mean, you might think just sitting quiet, nothing happens, but it's teeming with, with downloads, with information, with connection. Um, and the animals that show up, there's ravens and vultures, um, there's bears and cougars, um, There's all kinds of birds and squirrels and badgers and foxes and all kinds. So it's like kind of whoever's supposed to show up shows up, right? And it's just such a magical time. It's such a deepening. Um, it's it is life changing, and I highly recommend if you have a have the opportunity to do a vision quest to do it. Um, the people I'm doing it with. Um, their names are Therese and Terry, and they, they live on, on Bainbridge Island here in Washington. And they, they live at a place called Sacred Groves. I think their website is sacredgroves.com. So if it's something that interests you, it's like once a year on Labor Day weekend. So if it's something that appeals to you, check it out. I, I highly, I can't recommend it enough. But um, well, the thing that came to me as I'm sitting here praying, holding my pipe, was, you know, it seems like, I know for myself, I'm always trying to balance spirit life, spiritual life with mundane life. And it's kind of like this wrestling match between the two. And I just had the sudden clarity of how, just like, um, in our, in our society, we have, we always talk about the duality. We see things in duality and we think they're opposing forces like good versus evil, but it's not good versus evil. It's about love and fear. And in actuality, love is the only power in the universe. The love is, love is everything. Everything is love. Fear is, um, a misperception, like a, a refusal or a closing off from that love. So it's not two opposing forces, you know, fighting it out till the end of time to see who wins. It's about love and love overcomes all fear. Um, and like that, just like spiritual life versus mundane life, everything is spiritual life. Instead of trying to balance the two as if they're opposed, like two separate, equal opposing things, spiritual life is truly all there is. And so it's like bringing that, you know, especially as I'm getting ready for this major um, initiation, uh, rite of passage, it's important for me to start, like my guys were telling me to start 
um, they want me to come here to the river every day, every morning and do ceremony. And it's by tuning into that spirit, turning, tuning into my inner spirit, my heart, that everything else falls into place. It's not tuning in and then, okay, now let that go because I have to pay bills, etc., whatever. The spiritual life under, under, underpins, underpines, I don't know what that word is, but that's the one coming to my head. Um, everything else is couched within the spiritual life. So when you're in alignment, and this is something I talk about all the time, when you're in alignment, then everything you do is inspired action, inspirited action. And you can't help but be in the right place at the right time. And that is when the synchronicities start. Miracles happen. The right people show up at the right time with exactly the right help or information or whatever is needed at the time. And so rather it's it's and even in you know i was raised catholic so I've, I've read the bible a number of times and even jesus talks about seek ye first the kingdom right and the kingdom of heaven is within it's like first thing on, in your day find that find your heart find that kingdom within you that divine sovereign light that is you your essence excuse me when you have that everything shifts if there are challenges it's like it, it like parts excuse me <laughs> it parts the way it's like thank you for clearing my path thank you for clearing the path before me my path is clear and it, it'll remove obstacles it will kind of like that I haven't talked about this for a long time, but back in like the 70s or 80s, there was a, a, a commercial on TV for Dawn liquid soap, dishwasher soap, dishwashing soap. And they had a sink full of grease, right? There was like this whole layer, the sink, there was a whole layer of grease on top of the water. And they put a single drop of Dawn liquid soap in the middle and the grease just went and it, that's that's the way spirit works when you're in alignment it just like takes grease out of the way it's like it takes anything distractions or things that are detrimental or whatever that takes them out of your way so you can focus on where you're going I hope that makes sense to people. And I always say that a lot too. Like, I hope that, does that make sense? I'm not, I'm not doubting what I'm saying. I'm just wanting to make sure people are like, wow, you should really be more confident. And I'm like, I'm not doubting what I'm saying. I'm just, I want to make sure that people are understood. It makes sense to others because if it doesn't, then I can change the way I say it and find a way that others will be able to understand and so in fact i had a a reading today with someone and um she was bilingual she had she was i think spanish was her first language but she also spoke english but she wasn't totally sure of all the the, the words and stuff but she actually made the point afterwards of saying, you explained it really like the way I explained it, she understood it. Like I was able to kind of put it in a way that it landed. And so when I, when I say, does that make sense? Um, that's where it's coming from. A lot of times I'll get these visions or this, these feelings and it is so difficult to bring this nebulous information or energy and and string it out word by word by word by word so 
anyway so that is kind of what came to me today was the whole your life is spiritual even the mundane stuff is still spiritual there's no division there's no separation and when you seek the spirit first then like for me when i think about it it's like then everything every action becomes ceremony every action is sacred and it fits with the song i sang earlier the may you walk in beauty it's like everything you do everything you say everything you think sow seeds of either love or fear beauty or ugliness love or hate right and so to walk in beauty is to be in the world in such a way that every seed you plant is a seed of beauty of love of connection of unity of coming together rather than divisiveness and separation and power struggles and all of that and you know people come to me all the time what's my purpose tell me what my purpose is and as if there's some mission, you know, given from on high, some holy quest that you need to do, something you need to go and do in order to, like, earn your passage on this planet or something, right? But the fact that you are here, this is your purpose just being here on the planet expressing yourself being your true authentic self that is your purpose there's no one up in the sky with a dry erase board keeping score you know making tallies for everything you get right and everything you get wrong and all of that um Your purpose is who you are. Like um, Sandra Ingerman, my teacher, likes to say, um, it's not what you do, but who you become that changes the world. So by becoming, by seeking that spirit within you, by seeking your true self, you automatically act in a way that's congruent, that's harmonious with who you truly are. And that sends those, those ripples of beauty out into the world. And it touches everyone around you. And it becomes um, entrainment. You know, that phenomenon of when you have a room full of clocks. Before they had digital clocks and they all had pendulums and stuff. Eventually, all those clocks tick-tock at the same rate. It's called entrainment. And if you're the highest vibration in the room, every other vibration is going to rise to meet you. It may not get all the way to where you are, but you will open hearts. You will heal people's troubles simply by your presence. That's unicorn medicine. By being your true, holy, sacred self, you don't have to do anything. Just your presence changes the world around you. And then if there is something that is needed, some action, you will be inspired. You will get the intuitive nudges to do certain things or say certain things. But it's coming from that divine within, you know. It's the namaste. The divine in me greets the divine in you but you can't see the divinity in someone else until you rest in your own divinity. You are as important as anyone else. There's no one on the planet who is more important than you, who is more special than you, is more powerful than you. You are an essential piece of the puzzle that is the world. It's not by accident that you are here. It's not by accident that you're watching this, um, you are meant to be here and you don't have to earn your way. You don't have to deserve the fact 
that you are here proves that you deserve to be here. All right, so. So as best you can, you know, in the coming week or so, every morning when you wake up, try to take a breath and try to breathe into that sacredness of who you are. You are sacred space. You are sacred ground. And when you can hold to that, and if you, if you, you know, we, we're human, we're going to kind of be kind of slide off to the side or get diverted or get distracted. And just like in meditation, they tell you when you notice you're drifting, just to gently bring yourself back to center because you can't lose this. This is your eternal self. This is the part of you that is beyond harm, beyond destruction. It's indestructible. It's eternal. It's who you really are as spirit having a human experience, not the other way around. So the more you can touch into that through your day, you will be amazed at how things just fall into place. And even things that before you might have seen as a problem or a challenge, things will start to line up. People will come in with, with the right information you need or you might, miracles happen. Miracles are the normal way of nature when it's unimpeded. So trust yourself and love yourself. Know that you are just as divine, just as important, just as magical and just as powerful as anyone else in the universe. We are all part of that same source energy. So believe in yourself. I do. I believe in you. So that is our evening. Let me release our sacred space. Um, and just remind you that I am here to support you on your journey. Um, you can visit my website, perchingwolfstudios.net um, and see what kind of shamanic services I offer, healings and readings and teachings. Oh my. Um, and you can sign, you can schedule an appointment with me right from my website and we can do it in person here in Renton, Washington, or we can do it over Zoom, no matter where you are on the globe. But I am here to support my community that supports me. It's a reciprocity and I so love my job and I am so eager and excited to help others find their own path not my path but every person is unique and special just like everyone else but my job is to help others find their own unique path to find their own heart their own guidance and their own intuition so um so again, thank you for watching. Um, every Wednesday night from this point forward, 7 o'clock, I'll be here doing these ceremonies. I hope you can join me next week. Invite your friends. Please share the video. Um, what else? I guess that's it for now. I'll probably think of a whole bunch of stuff I forgot to say once we're done, but that's okay. Um, I will share this to my Perching Wolf Studios Facebook page, and I will also upload it to my Perching Wolf Studios YouTube channel. So check out my YouTube channel, subscribe, like my videos. I've got over two and a half years worth of these ceremonies and readings and other stuff. So check that out as well, and thank you. So.
spirits of the land, the ancestors of the land. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for holding us in your love and your light. Our work for now is done, but you are always welcome in our circles. my friends thank you again so much for watching thank you for sharing the video thank you for joining me you might think that you have no effect on this but your energy is palpable and it affects even if you're watching this a year from now your energy is right here and a and a essential part of this ceremony and you make a difference so have a wonderful week. Oh, on Monday nights at seven o'clock, I do medicine card readings. I don't have my medicine cards with me, but it's a card deck that works with the totem animals. So if you would like a one card reading, if you're one of the first six people to show up during my Facebook Live on Monday nights and you comment yes, um, you get a, a one card reading from the medicine card deck. Of course, I do another card that covers everyone, whether you get a, a reading or not. But it's lots of fun, so I hope you can join me for that. If not, I hope to see you here again next Wednesday. Oh, hi, Sarah. I love you, too. Oh, my dear, dear friend Sarah's here. Yay. And hi, Jefflin and Amina. Everybody's here tonight. Yay. Thank you, you guys. So until I see you next, remember that I love you that I see you, that I honor you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Carry this spirit with you into the rest of your life and have a wonderful week. Go shining, everybody. Bye.